Want your doorbell to do something like this? Hi, we'll be right there. Please wait a moment. Or maybe something like this. Sorry, we're not at home at the moment. Please leave the package by the garage door or record your message now. Well, fear not, today we will look at reeling doorbell and how to automate replies with Home Assistant. First, let's make sure we set up a reeling app correctly. To do so, go into the app, Settings, Advanced, and user management. In here, you can set up the users to use within your Home Assistant setup. You can set up one or many, really up to you. Then we go back to the main settings menu, scroll up, go into sounds and voice message. In here, we can add our own voice recording. It can be up to 10 seconds long. As you can see, I've created four different ones which suit my needs. You can create more or less. It's really up to your own decision making at this point in time. With that being done, we can now proceed into switching into the Home Assistant. In Home Assistant, as always, we'll start off with integrations. Add integration. Search for real link. And there you can add the necessary information. Click submit. Many times some assistant will auto identify real link, so that makes it easier. Now let's find our doorbell. For that we search real link, real link video doorbell Wi-Fi. And in here you have lots of controls. As you can see, lots of sensors being pulled by this integration, lots of controls, FTP, push notifications, recording, all sorts. The key thing we are looking for though is at the very top, the auto reply messages. As you can see, you can find those you've just created yourself. And these are the ones we're going to use to drive our automations. With that, let's switch over to the automations. With the first one being the automation that is based on the times and you're away from your home. For that, we're going automations, create automation, create new automation. As a trigger, we're actually going to be using the state of the doorbell visitor function. So the visitor is essentially when somebody rings the bell. And we can even say from off to on to make sure there is nothing untoward there. Now, in the conditions, we need to make sure that the system understands that we are away. In order to do that, we'll actually need two options where both of our devices, myself and my wife's, are not at home. In order to do that, we'll choose the state, we'll find the king phone, and we will make sure the status is away. Now, repeat the same for as many people as you need in your household, and when you're done, you can finally go to then do, choose the device, doorbell, change doorbell, play quick reply message to first option, uh, probably not the best, instead, change doorbell, quick reply message to the option. And now, we can actually select the option. Package message. So when somebody clicks the button, they're going to hear the following Sorry, message. We're not at home at the moment. Please leave the package by the garage door or record your message now. Next up, version of the same automation, but for the times when we actually are at home and we just want to make sure that whoever is visiting us is waiting for us to come to that door. For that, we'll create a new automation. We'll use the same trigger of the state doorbell visitor going from off to on. In the conditions, we will again use the exact same condition of king phone being home and now we can choose a different doorbell message and choose an option and now we say let's choose this hey okay, we'll be right there hi we'll be right there please wait a moment or the third automation is for those times when you actually are away which will work nearly exactly the same as the two you've just seen, with the only difference being that it will check that the status of the automation doorbell auto reply away is actually off. Because when I leave my house, I have a special automation which disables a whole bunch of them 
and then enables a whole bunch of the others. And if I know I'll be away for more than one day, a couple of days, that's how it's going to be. For that, we'll again choose the same quick reply message option. And for that, we have a travel away option, which just gives you a slightly different response. Here are the free bonus automations for this doorbell. Again, the trigger is always the same. It's a state of doorbell visitor. So when somebody clicks it, it goes from off to on. Now in here, we're actually gonna put the sun and it's a sun after sunset. So the condition that we're looking for is a sun after sunset. We then add action, switch, turn on. In your case, it can be light, turn on. We then choose the entities. In my case, it's porch indoor and porch outdoor, simply because I want to make sure that there is light both inside of the house and outside. We then set up a delay for five minutes because we don't want that light to be on all the time. We don't want to worry about you know switching it off when we've talked to whoever was at the door at the time. And then we choose switch, turn off. And again, we use exactly the same entities to switch things off. So what's gonna happen is very simple. Somebody rings the door, the lights come on, you speak to them, close the door, leave, and then within the five minutes, the lights will go off. Now for automation, we'll focus on creating visual cues for ourselves that somebody is at the door. If we can't hear the door well, we can actually see with our eyes. We use the same state of doorbell visitor, changes from off to on. We will not set any conditions, although you may choose to, depending on the time of the day or things of that nature. And instead of all of the switches that we have here, what we will do is simply conditionally execute action. So if then, and we use as a condition, if the state of my phone is home and the state of the monitor socket in my office is off. With that, I know that I'm not in the office, so there's no point of running the automation, but if I'm not, we'll then, first off, can send a notification, an audio notification through my Echo device in the bedroom. Please type TDS and we just say someone is at the door. Additionally, we create a repeat action. Within that repeat action, we choose count, we make it a count of five, so it's going to be five repeats. And what we're going to do is simply light turn on, we choose LED strip in the room, we choose the color to turn red, we then add a one second wait, we do light turn off for the same LED strip and we add a last wait of a second. So essentially what it's going to do, it will create a pulsating red light in the room to warn us that someone is actually at the door. Now, what I also tend to do is, after that happened, to make sure it does not stay red afterwards, I activate the scene, what I call King Mood, which essentially returns the light to my preferred setup. Now, alternatively, you can have another action, if, then, whereby, if the that monitor socket is actually on, which means that I am in the office, and maybe we want to have another condition that the time is after 9 in the morning and before 5 p.m. in the evening on the weekdays, we will then add a repeat action similar to the one we've done but instead we're going to use light turn on and turn on the lights in the office on and off on and off so again light turn on then we wait for a second to create the pulsation effect light turn off is the same 
office lights helper and we add another weight of a second now the end result will look something like this Someone at the front door. now the final bug today is what i call a doorbell logger let's look at it right now our state or the trigger doesn't really change still a doorbell visitor going from off to on but there's no conditions so that you may choose to set some up the first step is you perform action of taking a snapshot on the doorbell camera for that you need to write a little bit of yaml where you have an empty id of camera doorbell and then you create a very unique file name by using a string of now strife time day month year hour and minutes that will save it into your home assistant server and then you'll have all the snapshots again some of you would say well why would you do that you already have it in your real link app what i've noticed is it's great to have exact date exact time so that when you actually need to go back into the doorbell and check what happened before and after it's just a good and easy way for me to navigate the timeline of the events on my doorbell we'll then take a couple of seconds of delay we'll first send a message to our telegram bot which says the doorbell rang, it happened at this time, on this day. Again, it uses templating to make sure that it's exactly correct time and it's different every time that happens. And then it will also push a notification to my phone saying that the doorbell rang was locked at this time and also showing me the picture of what's actually happening in there. I hope you found this useful, like and subscribe and thank you for watching, see you in the next one.